Tonight, Amazon's upcoming gaming and TV device, Google Services, is hit with an outage. Dorian Nakamoto wants to clear his name and a lot more. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 45, for Monday, March 17th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by iFixit, who make electronics repair easy with all the parts and tools you'll need, plus free repair guides. For $10 off your purchase of $50 or more, go to ifixit.com slash twit and enter the code TN2 at checkout. Hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Lane. It's GDC week in San Francisco. That's the Game Developers Conference, which kicked off today and runs through Friday, March 21st at Moscone Center. Let's get right into the tech feed. TechCrunch is reporting that Amazon's upcoming game console set-top box will rival the Chromecast and be in a dongle form. This is according to anonymous sources. Rumors also have it supporting streaming full PC game titles, which would put it in the same category as an Xbox or a PlayStation, and would put Amazon into more direct competition with, say, a Steam and big game console makers. Amazon would also likely promote its streaming Amazon Instant Video and Amazon MP3 offerings through the device. Well, if you had any issues with Google this morning, then you and I have something in common. Google's instant messaging tool Hangouts suffered a outage this morning, affected quite a few folks who use the service regularly, and its spreadsheet app Sheets and another instant messaging service Google Talk also experienced disruptions. This is according to the company's status dashboard. Hangouts powers text messaging on many Android devices, so outages from folks who could not text were first reported around 9 a.m. Pacific time. This is Google's first big outage since Gmail had some hiccups back on February 25th. As of 11.15 a.m. Pacific time, Google had posted messages saying that Hangouts, Talk, and Sheets service had been restored for some users, and the company expects the problems to be fixed for everyone in the near future. Fast Company's Austin Carr is reporting he has seen Airbnb's lofty roadmap for 2014, which includes new transportation services and extras like fresh bedding for Airbnb hosts. The company has also begun a New York City test of alternate ways to help with host and guest key exchanges. Plus, hosts will have new options to classify their listings, such as I'm a business-ready listing. This could make it easier for Airbnb to target corporate travelers who represent about 40% of the market. Market. Airbnb also announced in February that all hosts must install smoke detectors by the year's end. <laughs> that would be a good thing. Dorian Satoshi Nakamoto, the man that Newsweek claimed was the creator of Bitcoin, has hired a law firm and issued a statement through his lawyer last night in an attempt to clear his name. In the statement, Nakamoto says, quote, I did not create, invent, or otherwise work on Bitcoin. I unconditionally deny the Newsweek report. Nakamoto claims he heard the term Bitcoin from his son in February after he'd been contacted by the reporter that was working on the story for Newsweek. He also says, quote, I have no knowledge, nor have I ever worked on cryptography, peer-to-peer -peer systems, or alternative currencies. The plot thickens. Well, coming up, have you ever wondered what would happen if you gave Superman a GoPro? Well, we've got that video. And next, I'm joined by Reed Albergati from the Wall Street Journal to talk about his story on the WhatsApp security glitch. But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by iFixit, makers of the ProTech Toolkit. The ProTech Toolkit contains 70 tools to help you with almost any repair or any project. It includes iFixit's 54-bit driver kit with standard specialty and security bits. It also includes ESD safe precision tweezers and anti-static wrist strap opening tools to get inside any phone, tablet, game console, you name it. It is the gold standard for electronics work, garage hackers, FBI, Everybody uses it, but more importantly, iFixit's unique tools are used by technicians everywhere, and they know what they're doing. It's backed by a one-year warranty. The ProTech Toolkit is only $69.95. With iFixit, you can fix pretty much anything yourself. Visit iFixit.com slash twit for all the repair parts and tools you'll need, plus free repair guides. Enter the code TN2 at checkout to save $10 off any purchase of $50 or more. That's ifixit.com slash twit and use that code TN2. All right, joining us now is Reed Albergati, a reporter at the Wall Street Journal. Hello, Reed. Oh, you're very still, Reed. Very still indeed. Oh, okay, I'm back. <laughs> yeah, you're back. Hi, thanks for joining us. 
<laughs> Thanks for having me. All right, so you wrote a story titled WhatsApp Faces New Challenge Security Researcher Raises Possible Privacy Issue for Messaging Service. Uh-oh, what's going on here? Well, basically, a security expert came to us and he said, look, I had this really strange thing happen. Um, I got a new phone. I signed up for WhatsApp. But instead of my photo and my name showing up in the account, it was a woman named Jessica, um, and it was her photo wearing a red scarf. It turned out that Jessica had previously had his phone number and had since moved to China. So this has happened before, and WhatsApp actually, you know, sort of dismisses this as just a normal occurrence when you, you know, you switch phone numbers. We've all had that phone call from some random person who used to have our phone number. Um, but this is a little different. I mean, Jessica's uh, family was including this guy, this security expert, um, on, on family emails with photos of restaurants and as they planned their family uh, functions. Um, friends were emailing her really confused. Um, they thought they were email or thought they thought they were WhatsApping Jessica, but they were yeah. actually WhatsApping this guy. So it created this this whole situation that really wouldn't have existed before in the days of simple SMS text messaging. So is this a glitch that's happening on the WhatsApp side? The fact that this man was a security researcher it just happens to be coincidental? Total coincidence, yeah. Weird. So what's app going to do to prevent something like this happening. It doesn't sound like the company is all that worried about it or thinks that it's much of a security issue. No, they don't. And what they had done before was actually post something on their frequently asked questions page where they explained what you should do if you switch phone numbers. And basically, you should delete your WhatsApp account from your phone or, you know, when you get the new phone, transfer the account from one number to the next. Because what appears to be happening is people can actually have two WhatsApp active of accounts tied to, to two different numbers. Um, I haven't really, the, the company hasn't really gotten into the details with me of how this glitch is happening or how, how it really, the nuts and bolts of how it works, but they're really not concerned about it. I guess, you know, they feel that they, since they don't have credit card information for users, it's really not a big issue. Um, of course, the security researcher, researcher I, I spoke with and some others um, thought it was, it was a pretty serious glitch. Now that Facebook is in the process of buying WhatsApp, obviously privacy is very important to 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 the longevity of, of the Facebook service. If people are even by accident getting other people's WhatsApp information, you mentioned that there were uh, there were family members of of this woman Jessica who were giving out what might be actually sensitive information to somebody they didn't even know. What are some of the other risks involved with this little switcheroo? Well, I think that it, it, it's really, I mean, look, it's a, probably a small number of people um, that this will ever happen to. Although with 450 million users and growing, the chances just keep going up and up. Um, and what could happen is if, if one person ends up in the situation that this security researcher ended up in and was maybe not such a great person, they could exploit that situation, um, take advantage of people. And there may be other ways to exploit that glitch that we don't even know about. Well, Reed, thanks for coming on the show today and explaining a little bit more about what's happening and what people should look out for potentially and also how they can protect themselves. Tell folks where they can read more of your work. So I'm a reporter with the Wall Street Journal. Um, you can read us on WSJ.com or um, Digits, which is our, our blog, or WSJD, which is our new uh, landing page for tech news. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Finally, what's faster than a speeding bullet? Oh, you know, just Superman with a GoPro. He's stronger than steel. A team has recreated a first-person view of a day in the life of Superman using a personal RC drone, a GoPro camera, and a little clever video editing. Now, GoPro itself is known for these sorts of videos, but this is not the company behind it, not this time. The company's actually preparing to go public and is entered into a quiet period, but this type of publicity certainly does not hurt. Good work. you got to watch the video if you haven't seen it yet. Well, that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write us at TN2 at twit.tv. Our next newscast is tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. See you then. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.